And now I'd like to begin by introducing District Governor-elect Mark Roberts. I see you there. I'm here. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for sharing part of your Saturday morning with your fellow Rotarians. Uh, I want to thank um, the training team and especially all the moderators who planned these, uh, these presentations. They were originally going to be giving them in person at the assemblies in earlier this spring, but we're very grateful they've uh, rearranged them to present them virtually. So I also, and give a special thanks to uh, our, our pathfinding moderator this morning, uh, past District Governor Steve Lack. So again, thanks to all of you for joining us and let's get the show on the road. Okay, so right now I am going to mute everyone and I am excited to introduce today's presenter, past District Governor from, um, from the Rotary Club of Pleasant Hill, past District Governor Steve Lack. So Steve, take it away. Good morning all. Saturday morning greetings. I joined Rotary in 2002, as she said, the Rotary Club of Pleasant Hill, and was club president, been an assistant governor, and had the fortune of being a district governor back in 1314 in a long line of illustrious district governors. And I see that we have a variety of experience on the screen here. Many of you know more probably about Rotary than I do, and a lot of you are probably new. What we're going to do today is look at Rotary 101, which is the best way to start these assemblies, is start with the basics, who we are, where we came from, and what we do, and most importantly, why we do it. So without further ado, let me share my screen. Okay, and it starts with a Rotarian. Why are you here? And I'd like to see if uh, you can put in your chat section why you're here. Some of you are here to learn about Rotary and you can raise your hand if uh, that is why you're here. Some of you will want to teach this at your clubs and so that might be a reason. A couple of you want to have fun. I hope all of you do because that's rule number one in Rotary is have fun. Friendships. On this screen, we're all friends because we're all in the family of Rotary. Networking, we do business together. And it's been said, we don't join Rotary to network, but when we are in Rotary, we do network. And of course, I hope you're here to enhance your Rotary experience. Steve, what people shared is that they are here for various reasons. We have several new uh, Rotarians, including someone who's only been with us for a month, uh, been a member of Rotary for a month. I know um, somebody, uh, Bob said he's been a member since December, looking to get more information. And there are a couple of those seasoned members who are here to make sure that you and I are on track and, and behaving ourselves. Um, so just to make sure that we're, that we're online. Very good. And, and here is just a variety of pictures from around the district of the fun that we have. And of course in center is our illustrious past district governor, past Rotary International President, Cliff Docterman, who is from the Rotary Club of Moraga and a proud member of our District 5160 family. Who are we? Well, we first have to be invited to join, but most of you, and I'd say all of you in some way, are leaders. Whether you're a civic leader, a business leader, we represent all ages, all ethnicities, religions, backgrounds, because we are 1.2 million from around the world. A lot of us are retired because 10,000 people a day retire, and Rotary does attract a lot of them because one of the things retirees want to do is continue to give back. We represent all kinds of vocations. That's the classification system. And there's a contract. One, you bring your vocational experience to Rotary and in return, you bring Rotary back to your vocation. We have our four-way test, the famous four-way test. And I would wonder if, <laughs> Whether you're muted or not, uh, is it the truth? Right. Is it fair to fair all concerned? concerned? 
Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all? To all concerned. And that applies to all 1.2 million of us. Why are we here? And I would say that one of the whys that we all share is we all feel better when we're doing for others, when we're giving back. It makes us feel good. So in a sense, this is our support group that we meet once a week to get our fix. Because when we're not giving back, when we're not providing to our community, we don't feel as good as we would when we are. And the more we give, the better we feel. There are other reasons we're here on top of that. And in your chat section, I hope you'll write, why are you Rotarian? Did you come here to business network? Friends, we all could use friends. Hang out with leaders. Rotary is the best place to connect with the movers and shakers in your community. Having fun. If Rotary isn't fun, then we need to fix that in your club. Learn and stay active. How did you become a Rotarian? And the thing is, we all became a Rotarian the same way. We had to be invited. Nobody gets into Rotary unless they're asked. But does that mean we're exclusive? Well, no. What we're looking for are people who share our why. They want to give back to the community. They want to learn. They want to have funds. They want to do the same things we do. They want to be service above self. So you all visited clubs. I'm wondering how many of you visited multiple clubs before you chose the one that you're a member of? And probably the one you belong to is the one that was the best fit. Within 10 minutes of Pleasant Hill, there are about 20 to 30 clubs. And I love you all, but Pleasant Hill is the best fit for me. The chemistry is right. And to tell you the truth, I have difficulty finding another club that would fit just as well as Pleasant Hill. And I think you would say the same for your club. It's the best fit. And of course, we pay dues because it's how we keep Rotary going. Where are we? Well, we're in a club and that club could be a brick and mortar club, most likely right now. And it's in a town where you work or you live. And it's different demographics. There are young clubs. Diablo View was a young generations club. It's maturing and now they have a variety of ages, but they're all different. And that is our strength, is in our diversity. And we don't meet brick and mortar anymore. Matter of fact, most of us, if not all of us are meeting online. We've all become e-clubs. And we're not just Rotary clubs, we're Interact clubs and half a million people, uh, high school students, around the world are in Interact, which is our high school program. And then there are the Rotaract clubs for college, 9,523 of them to be precise. And we have the largest Rotaract club in the United States in our district. Does anybody know which Rotary club that is? So Claire, did anybody guess what the number one Rotary club in the United States is? Yeah, the, the, it's good to, I'll, I'm happy to report that the members of the DG line seem to know that it's the Cal Rotaract at UC Berkeley. Now let's take a look at a picture of what Rotary looks like. Now you notice I don't start with Rotarians. It's the world and the local community that we serve. That's where it starts. There's a need in the world. If there was no need, there probably wouldn't be a Rotary. But at the top of our pyramid are you the Rotarians, the 1.2. 3,500 of you are reside in District 5160. Rotary is a bottoms up organization, or should I say a bottoms down organization. The customer of a Rotary club is you, the Rotarians, because you are the ones that serve the community. Our customer as a Rotary club is not the community, it's you. You are the most important element in Rotary International. You form into clubs. We have 73 of them in our district, 33,000 of them in the world. In our district and in most uh, districts, they're broken into areas because the district governor can't oversee 73 clubs all at once. So in the areas, we have 12 in our district. 
and there are 532 districts around the world. And once a year, they all meet. When the district governor elect in, in January, they all meet, and it has been up till now in San Diego. And it's an amazing experience when you have 532, everybody in the same position, but from around the world. So when you're sitting at a table, you're talking to somebody from Australia or Japan, Europe, but we all have one goal, and that's to serve you, the Rotarians. Because after all, district governors are nothing more than Rotarians who've been given a job. Oops. Districts form zones, and that's one of the more invisible parts of Rotary. There are 34 zones in the world divided into 17. Each RI director heads up two zones. We're in 2627, actually, because Rotary is changing as far as its population. We're losing members of North America, so many that we lost a zone and we lost a RI director from North America. So they merged uh, zones. And I'll show you a picture later on of what our zone looks like. And then the zones make up Rotary International. Clubs are headed by presidents. And to be a club president, you of course have to be a Rotarian. You can then be an assistant governor because you have to be a club president to be an assistant governor. And then you're actually in more contact with club presidents than the district governor because as an assistant governor, you'll meet monthly with your group of club presidents. In the district, it's headed by a governor who had to be a past club president but didn't have to be an assistant governor. The zones are headed by Rotary International Directors who had to be a past district governor. That's a requirement, among others, to be an RI director. And then there is the president of Rotary International who had to be a Rotary International Director. You can't get to, to be a president unless you've been a director. Now clubs, they meet weekly in meetings and we all have our fundraising events. Areas get together, like the 680 corridor has multi-club meetings and the Fab Five, usually once a year, has a Fab Five meeting. And I would encourage all club areas to have multi-club meetings. Districts, we meet in a district conference once a year. The next one will be coming up virtually this month, or actually we're not in June yet, but it'll be coming up in June. Zones have get-togethers, and they're called institutes. They're held once a year. The next one is supposed to be in San Diego in November. I think it's November. And then the International Convention. That's a once a year, and it's moved around the world. It was going to be in Honolulu this year, but it is now going to be virtually online from June 20th to 26th. And that's what Rotary looks like organizationally. So we start again you're a Rotarian, you're going to join a club. The club is usually named after a city, but not always. For example, Diablo View. Or there are multiple clubs in a city, so you have Woodland Luna Vista, Woodland Sunrise, and the Woodland Club itself. Every club had to be chartered. Our oldest club is the Berkeley Club, over 100 years old. There have to be a minimum number of members, and I believe it's 20. And there are currently 35,399 clubs in the world, to be precise. Why belong to a Rotary Club? There are lots of reasons. And again, if you put in your chat, type in why you belong to a Rotary Club. Maybe it's to help youth Maybe it's through Interact or Rotaract. Maybe it's to help your community. There, what you see there in Bernie is a kiosk built by Rotary. We have parades, a lot of us ride in 4th of July parades because we support our community both financially and actively. What's a club? How's it run? Bylaws. And I would encourage all of you to actually get a copy of your bylaws and read them. My club is like most. What we do and what our bylaws say is not always the same. Customs form, and for example, we chose a president, a club president, usually the club president elect 
and the club president, they choose their successor. But most bylaws require an election that uh, somebody is elected to it. So we had to go back and either change our bylaws to reflect what we actually did or change what we actually do to be our bylaws. And I would say that happens in a lot of cases. Check your bylaws and they should either reflect what you do or you change what you do to reflect your bylaws. That conflict is common, but it causes confusion. You all have board of directors. You all are probably incorporated and most of you probably have two organizations, the club corporation and your foundation nonprofit. You have officers. And I would encourage all of you to have three off presidents at a time. The current president, the president elect who will take uh, their place presiding starting July 1st, and a president elect nominee, the pen, the year after. Because the key word in Rotary leadership is continuity. It's not your year, it's your mentorship or your custodianship of the leadership for your year. And your year is one link in a bracelet, in a chain. And so we want to have all three at once, and they all three work together to make continuity so we progress together. Claire, did people write in chat why they belong to a Rotary Club? Several people did. Uh, what did they read? Right. So to help, con to help and connect with my community, to do some great things with great people and make the world a smaller place, uh, to help provide resources to, to my community and to high need areas, giving back, friendship, service, and fun. And then and for the friendship and working together in person or virtually. And do we have any questions at this time? We do not. All right, onward. How does a club support Rotarians? Well, as like I said, we're a support group. We meet, whether it's virtually or in person. Most of us miss it when we don't see each other because we're friends. Rotary, if it's nothing, it's relationships. And we form deep and lasting relationships. It's said we have each other's back. And in this time, in this challenge, that is comforting to know that we have each other's back, that we are family, and we can reach out. Because tonight, today, I am sure there is a Rotarian who needs you to reach out and say hi. And maybe you're that Rotarian who needs somebody to reach out to you to say hi. There are five avenues of service. I wonder if you can name all of them. International service, club service, vocational service, youth service. And what's the one I'm missing? Let's see if anybody can type that in their chat. We do programs and projects. And I would say that the variety of interests is so our strength. People are different in different things, whether it be helping youth, whether it be helping the unemployed, whether it be helping the hungry, whether it be helping your nonprofits, building infrastructure, and we all offer that, and each club it's different. But if you have a passion, your club will help you realize that passion. Right now in the Rotary Club of Pleasant Hill, we're out in Nicaragua building sanitation and water projects internationally, but locally, we have the White Pony Express, which helps the unemployed. We help the food bank for the hungry. We help our high school. We support the Interact Club. Another thing, Rotarians, you're experts. You have an amazing amount of knowledge, whether it be Rotary knowledge, whether you're an architect, an attorney, a doctor, a contractor, a real estate broker, an accountant, you can help train and develop members and help your projects. We support each other through our friendship and our networking. And attendance, participation, and key to Rotary is engagement. If you're not engaged, that's a problem because then you'll separate from Rotary. Engaged Rotarians are happy Rotarians. Engaged clubs of engaged Rotarians are thriving clubs. What do you want from Rotary? The two main topics are service and friendship. I won't read all of these, but in service, it's a variety of what 
is service to you. And friendships, all kinds of friendships across vocations. We have fellowships, matter of fact. I belong to a several of them, including, and this is a shameless plug, for the beers Rotarians enjoy worldwide brew. And we're getting together globally uh, next Saturday at three o'clock with about over 150 people from around the world because our friendships extend beyond our clubs. And most importantly, it has to be fun. All of us strive for fun because life is too short not to have fun. Then from the club becomes the district and we're district 5160. We used to be 516. And before that, as Rotary grew, the numbers changed, the boundaries changed, the clubs changed. But we started weed in the north, and we go down to San Ramon in the south. We go over to Bernie in the east and over to Hayfork in the west. Six hours from north to south, three hours from east to west. Why? Why do we have districts? Well, one, it's easier to put Rotarians in a geographic area and to manage them. Like I said, there are 33,000 clubs. If there was only a RI president, imagine it's just unwieldy. So they appointed district governors and always have to deal with clubs in a more geographic way. And the clubs are broken into areas to be more effectively serving you. The club president is an officer in the district, but not in Rotary International. Here's a question for you. In our district, how many members belong to Rotary International? Take a guess and write it in your chat. Districts have between 1,000 and 5,000 members and between 30 and 100 clubs and actually 532 districts around the world. Claire, did anybody indicate what they think? How many members belong to Rotary International? Um, there's a couple people, well, there's th three. What kind of guesses? What well, numbers did they put? They, they, what? So there's several people suggested everybody does 100% and then one person said zero. Well, everybody, nobody got the right answer. The answer is one. The district governor is the only member of Rotary International. You're and actually the district, the current district governor who's with us today. Yes. You know that she is. Tina Akins is our one and only member of Rotary International in our district. And on July 1st, she switches out with Mark Roberts, who will be our one Rotary International member. That was the district conference in Berkeley in District Governor Fred Kalignan's year. That was me at Pets with my uh, presidents from 2013-14. This is a very special picture. A couple times a year, the past district governors of your district get together. And this was a meeting several years ago. And I'm sad to say that a couple of members, Stan Smalley and uh, Bill Spaulding, have both joined the Rotary Club of Heaven. Paul Harris personally met them. And we also have, uh, oh, I, I think everybody else is with us. And you'll notice that Cliff is wearing his red jacket. His group of district governors were known as the Redcoats. And here is your illustrious governor who will take office in July of this year, Mark Roberts. How does a district support? The district governor serves one year in office, but it's a six-year commitment, three years up and three years down. Three years before your district governor nominee, district governor-elect, district governor. Then as past district governor, you have a number of roles for the next three years. As district governor, you lead a team of over 125 people, all volunteers. You provide training through the district, which we're doing today. This is an assembly. There's president-elect training seminar. Fall seminars usually focused on membership and foundation training and training through the district conference. And Steve, we do have a question when you have yes. a chance. Go there is it. a question that says, if we aren't members of RI, then why do we all pay dues? Because without RI, we wouldn't have a structure. We would be like, for example, Pleasant Hill. If we didn't support Rotary International, we'd be the social club of Pleasant Hill. 
It's the glue that ties us all together. But we're autonomous as a club. And the key thing to always remember, each club is autonomous. The Rotary International gives us guidance and we have bylaws that are based on their bylaws. But really, you are, you are a Rotarian of the world, but you don't have to belong to Rotary International. Hope that helps answer and clarify that. Here are a group of assistant governors. These were from the North State. Bev Stupak was the assistant governor at the time. And you'll notice shirts. Uh, there's been a custom for a number of years now. Each year, the district governor chooses a shirt. And this was a shirt for Fred uh, for um, Ken Corville's year, which was 1516. Kathy Suvia was assistant governor in meeting with her Mountain Foresters assistant governors, I mean, uh, presidents. The district provides the assistant governors who then were to give you, Rotarians, support and assistance through to your clubs. They also convey in information from Rotary International to the clubs through the club presidents. This is a zone. As I said, zones are somewhat invisible. This is zone 26 and 27. They've only been 26 and 27 for approximately a year. We now stretch from the west coast of the United States and Canada to almost mid country. We include now Montana and Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and parts of Texas. And once a year, we get together. The first combined meeting was held in Denver, Colorado. The next one will be in San Diego. And there's our district, if you want to see how our district compares in size. 5190 next to it, that's a long drive to service those clubs. But if you go to 5150, which is San Francisco, the district governor can make it to any club in their district in less than a half hour. And there are some districts in the world, for example, one that reaches from Canada over to Russia, and that's a tough one if you're the district governor. That is our building. That is Rotary headquarters. Where is it? It's in Chicago. And how did we begin? We began in 1905 with a person named Paul Harris. Paul Harris, originally from Vermont, went to law school, uh, actually in the University of Iowa. He decided he wanted to have adventures before he began work, so he was a reporter at the San Francisco Chronicle. He was a cowboy in Denver. He was an actor. After five years, he settled down in Chicago to begin his practice. But he was lonely, didn't have friends there. And he did have one friend, his lifelong friend, Sylvester Shield. And it, one night in February of 1905, he's having an Italian dinner. And he and Sylvester are having some wine. And they walk across the street to get together with Gus and Hiram. They sat around in Gus's office and they said, let's form a club. And we are the club. Four members. There's no Rotary International. And they began each week going from one person's business to the other. And they decided about a couple weeks later, what are we going to call this club? And somebody suggested Rotary. And Paul Harris was against it. He said, no, I have a better name. Because Paul Harris is a practical joker. You may not know that, but that's what he was. And he wanted to call uh, the club the conspirators because conspiring to make practical jokes. The other members weren't uh, enamored with that idea and they outvoted him and we became Rotary because we rotated the meetings from business to business of the members. Paul Harris, three years after, he was not the first president by the way in 1905, he became the president in 1907 because Rotary was primarily a business club and they did business with each other and it was so pervasive that they were getting a bad rap for that and Paul said no we need to be more than a business club we need to be a public service club. And our first project would be a public restroom. But the Chicago Club didn't want to do that. So he became president of the club in 1907 and formed a special subcommittee, which he called the Conspirators. And we have been a public service business club ever since. Now, we are now in over 200 countries in the world. We are in more countries than the United Nations has members. Our revenue is over 81 million a year. And our current motto, and I say current for a reason, 
is service above self because that became our motto in 1987. Prior to that, does anybody know what our motto was? It's he profits most who serves best because we were a business club. And if you ran your club according to Rotary Ethics and the four-way test, you would profit. And he profits most who serves best. And in 1907, that was changed. Now here's the start. Here's somebody you've never heard of before, Manuel Munoz. Manuel Munoz was Paul Harris's roommate in Chicago. Chicago Rotary did not want to grow at all. They always wanted to be the Chicago Rotary Club. But Paul had a vision. And Manuel Munoz, there he is with Paul. He worked for SNH Green Stamps. Some of you may remember, you might be old enough to remember SNH Green Stamps. And he was being transferred to San Francisco. So Paul secretly asked him, would you, if you're in San Francisco, have an opportunity to create a Rotary Club in San Francisco? Now, Manuel met a man named Homer Wood. And Homer Wood is the one that started San Francisco Club number two. And there's Homer Wood. In 1906 with, uh, actually, I believe it was 1907. And their first speaker was Charles Schwab the original Charles Schwab. Oakland is club number three. Seattle is club number four. And Los Angeles is club number five. Do you see a trend? Rotary started primarily on the west coast of the United States, and Chicago had nothing to say about this. We outnumbered the Chicago Rotary Club on the west coast. It wasn't until 1909 that the first big club, and Paul thought they, they would be club number two, but they turned out to be club number six. We owe a great debt to Manuel Munoz and Homer Wood, two unrecognized Rotarians who without them, we would not be who we are today. How are we managed? We're headquartered in Evanston, Illinois. The big building you saw, that's a Rotary headquarters. The RI president is like every other leader in Rotary except for one one group. They serve for one year. Just like every club president, every district governor, every year we change. But the Rotary International Directors serve for two years. And our current Rotary International Director is Dorita Solari from the Rotary Club of Anaheim, California. She'll be our Rotary International Director until July of 2021 when Vicki Pulitz, many of you may know her, she is gonna be our next RI director and she's amazing. She's one of my classmates. She was a district governor in 1314 from the district of 5190, R Reno, Nevada. She's actually a member of the Sparks Nevada Rotary Club. And what's fabulous about her, it usually takes a very long time to become an RI director. She was an, an R, a district governor in 13, eight, seven years ago. It's unheard of to make the jump to RI director as fast as she has. Now, we've never had a woman president. Many of us believe that's going to change in the very near future and that we will have a female president of Rotary International very soon. Now, there's another person, and down here it says general secretary, and that's actually incorrect. That's the old term. It's an antiquated term. His new title is CEO, John Huco from the Rotary Club of Kiev in the Ukraine. That's exactly right, that's where he's from, but he's not a Ukrainian. He is an amazing person and he is our CEO and he is there for as long as we hopefully can keep him. He's been there for roughly eight years. And Chester Perry is another unsung name in Rotary history. He was the Rotary General Secretary from 1910 to 1941. Paul Harris was our founder, but Paul Harris himself will tell you that Chester Perry is the builder of Rotary. Here are our six areas of focus. We promote peace. We fight disease. We provide clean water. We support education. We grow local economies. And we save children. These are our six areas of focus. And our grants usually fall on one of those. 
And it's seldom that you could come up with a project that doesn't fit into one of those six categories. Drum roll here. This is our next Rotary International President, Holger Nock from Germany. He takes office on July 1st, taking over from Mark Maloney from the Rotary Club of, in, uh, he's from Alabama, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, Mark Maloney is an Alabamian. But our next president is from Germany. Now, one of the things that each president does is they have an annual theme. Our overall theme is service above self, but there's an annual theme to focus that year. Be the inspiration was one, making a difference was another, serving humanity was another, and be a gift to the world. This year, our district governor, Tina Akins, she serves under Mark Maloney and his theme and our theme is Rotary Connects the World, which we're doing right now. And now a drum roll. What will the next theme be starting July 1st? Rotary opens opportunities. And I can't believe of a more accurate theme. If Rotary doesn't open opportunities, nothing does. Now, we also have the Rotary Foundation. That's because we do good work in the world. And they're projects that you choose, Rotary controls, well, in most of your clubs, there are international projects or domestic projects. They're all kinds, shapes and sizes. And the key to them is that they're Rotary supported. And to let you know, Charity Navigator has given us their highest rating every year that they've ever rated us. Our, our money is one of the best managed monies in the world. If you wanna know about our impact, here are some areas. In the six areas, water and sanitation, uh, 2018, 19, 198 grants for 11.2 million. In polio, 99% has been reduced in the last 30 years. And I'll give you a second to look at this chart. It's an amazing impact we make in the world. Close your eyes and imagine no rotary. How many people would have died? I hope you know that there is a statistic that for every Paul Harris fellow, four lives are saved in the world. So if you're a Paul Harris fellow, you've saved four lives. If you're a Paul Harris plus 10, you've saved 40 lives. You are a Rotary hero. You save lives. So what recognitions are available we're talking about? I'm wearing the bling because if Rotary isn't about pins, it's not about anything. And I've got a, multiple pins here that uh, the first one, major donor, I'm a benefactor, a shameless plug for many clubs in our district have and will be continue to give what's called the service star, recognizing the hours that you and your fellow Rotarians donate to your community to service. And I'm in a fellowship, the Beer Rotarians Enjoy Worldwide Fellowship. There's the Paul Harris Award, if you give a cumulative $1,000, you become a Paul Harris Fellow, and that money will save at least four lives in the world. Next $1,000 you give cumulative, you get a, star, a pin with a jewel in it. And every time you go up $1,000, a new jewel is added until you get to a cumulative of $10,000. Then you become a major donor and you get a different pin. Benefactors, when you're thinking about leaving a legacy, you become a benefactor. And Rotary recognizes those who've left a gift in their will to Rotary. And the top award, if you give a quarter million dollars, 250,000, you become the Arch Club Society. Your picture gets put it up at Rotary International Headquarters in Chicago, and you're invited to a special uh, initiation or induction, not initiation, but induction into the Arch Club Society. These are the bling. Paul Harris variety of pins. Uh, once you get to about six, then they go to rubies. Paul Harris Society, if you give $1,000 a year and you pledge that, you get the rocker that I'm wearing. You also, these are major donors. That's, and it's not 1,000, 10,000, 20, 30. It goes like 10,000, 25,000, 50. And you also get a crystal that you can display proudly. If you want to find out more, if I've whetted your taste about Rotary, 
You can go to the Rotary International website at rotary.org go to our website, 5160.org. Go to our DACDB. Hopefully, you can go to your club website, and hopefully it is up to date and current. The manual procedure, if you want to know the rules that we operate under, I encourage you to go to our 5160 Facebook page and more than go there, post something about your club, something that you're doing, whether it's a picture, a screen print of what we're doing right now. YouTube, go to YouTube and just put in Rotary. There are an amazing amount of videos that you can use in your club from one minute videos to multi hour videos, but they are fascinating and they are a great way of learning more about Rotary. Here are two other Cliff Dockerman, an amazing man, created the ABCs of Rotary. It's a fast way to learn of our traditions and the history of Rotary and why we do what we do and how we do what we do. I encourage you, if you haven't gotten a copy of that, get it from rotary.org. It is a wonderful book. And if you want to know more about Paul, this is a fascinating book based on newly released documents. It's his birth of Rotary, and it takes him from a child to the time that he passed away in 1947. And it was asked of Paul in 1947, just before he died, did he know that Rotary was gonna turn into what it was? And he goes, I had no idea. I just thought I was getting together with a couple of friends. It's amazing what we've become, but what we are is a combination of business and service. If we were just business, we're a chamber of commerce. If we're just service, we're Salvation Army, we're Red Cross, we're the American Cancer Society. We are the only ones in the world that combine business and service and friendship. And now a test. Why are we called Rotary? You can type it in your chat. Hopefully most of you got it right. Claire, are they? Are they indicating why Rotary? No, nope, not yet. Uh, okay, now. Who's the first the, one? Because, because the club rotated between locations. Who got that right? Uh, Susan Alker. Thank was you, the Susan. the first one to type it. Who's the next one? First one to type. The, well, the, the answer, as he said, is because the founders rotated businesses. And that just lasted for a couple of weeks, and then they got too large, and then they had to meet for lunch. And the first club to hold a luncheon meeting was, this is an extra credit question, Oakland, club number three, was the first one to have a lunch meeting. And those are the four, Sylvester Shield, Paul Harris, Gus, and uh, so, uh, Hyrule. By the way, two of those people left Rotary within the first year. In fact, Gus left in about two weeks. She, Sylvester Shield and Paul Harris stayed friends and are buried next to each other, actually. But we lost 50% of the original founders in the first year and actually within the first six months. All right, question number two, see who types it first. Who is the past Rotary World President from District 5160 that has spoken at more Rotary Clubs in the world than anyone else? Debbie Koo from, oh, oh, well, I'm going to exclude the district governor. Who yes, knows. yes. But Debbie Koo from the Rotary Club of Moraga says Cliff Docterman. And she would be correct. He's the author of the four way uh, of the ABCs of Rotary. And he was worldwide president in 92, 93. If you get a chance, and it would be rare, uh, Cliff is not on the road. If you ever hear him, you'll hear him online. But uh, he's an amazing person, and I get his books. And one of his books is, as I was saying, why do most people join Rotary and stay in Rotary? First question, a uh, first answer. Friendship and fun from Fred Stam Stambaugh from the Rotary Club of Lomer in the Sunrise. Uh, Fred, that's why they stay in Rotary. But when they took it, and there was a survey a couple years back, that question, why did you join and why do you stay? And the reason Beverly's, they joined- Beverly, Beverly Ames says service, friendship. Susan yes. Alker says service, service and friendship as well. And the why was service to the local community. It wasn't global. And to tell you the truth, when I joined Rotary, it was because it was local. I didn't learn about our global impact till I joined Rotary. Most of us don't. 
we're here to give back to our local community and then we learn to give back globally and we stay for the friendships that we form. Friends and contacts, local impact, vocational service, and leaders to work with. And this is for all of you, for each of you have a different answer. What do you get out of Rotary? I think it's like coffee. It makes everything better. Now, if you have any other questions, I want to thank you for your time today. And hopefully this taught you something about Rotary you didn't know and gives you a better sense of the organization that you belong to and that you are an integral part of this movement. We're not an organization. We're a movement and a world movement. And the world needs you and you need the, the Rotary. Thank you. A lot of good feedback. Everyone saying this was great, Steve. A lot of good info. Any questions? I am not seeing any. Does anybody have any questions? I'm Giles. available to give programs, and there are four programs that I can give to a clubs. I do them online. One is Who Wants to Be a Rotary Millionaire, where you can win 100 Paul Harris recognition points if you get four questions right. Vocational service, how to be a Rotary champion through vocational service. The coin of the realm, the wow factor in fundraising, how to do a fundraiser as the wow factor, and of course, fellowships focusing on beer and the Beards Rotarians Enjoy Worldwide Fellowship. So anytime you, you'd like, I am happy to be a program for you. Well, that's all the questions that I have right. online, Steve. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you so much for this great presentation today. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. And to you. And thanks to all of you for, for being with us today. Everybody have a great Saturday. Uh, well, and if you enjoyed this presentation, please remind your fellow club members we have eight other uh, sessions coming up and to uh, register and uh, they can have the same experience. Thank you. Take care. Bye.